Hello everybody. For te kahoro a hau, for Nati Wai toku iwi, for Nati Hiro Rehoa toku apu. I'm from Pananaki, which is um. outside of Whangarei and um, I just wanted to uh, bestow my blessings to this hikoi going through the rohe and between Te Hanna and uh, up to uh, Waitangi. Uh, much love and much aroha to you all. Kia kaha, kia ora, kia aroha. Um, unfortunately I, I can't be up there with you leading through there but um, well if this motherfucker knew what he was getting himself into for the next three days, oh my giddy aunt. Tēnā to everybody. Ko te kahoro ahau. Welcome to the first Mercer special, episode number one, nearly a year um, to the date. Um, we got some unseen footage, uh, all sorts of different stuff uh, for you this evening. Now this is episode one. And through this episode, we're going to be talking about kind of what was leading up to us getting stuck at the borders at Mercer. Because I know it's a very hot topic still to this day. Um, you know, it was these series of events that led up to the convoy that, that led to Wellington, in, in my uh, opinion, basically. So, now let's, let's kind of backtrack a little bit. This clip here is from um, us leaving uh, Rotorua um, and maybe for about a month, uh, maybe six weeks prior to that, um, there was a few of us uh, that were working together in um, a Zoom groups and they were very productive, really joined everyone together and I would like to say to um, the people that originally brought those together, good mahi. Um, and that's when uh, all of these different hui's that I was putting on around um, Bay of Plenty area started kicking off and I uh, also held one down in Wanganui where I met a lot of awesome people and um, we had some good wānanga in that uh, around, the, around the country. Now, um, of course if we can remember, this convoy was um, planned to push through the borders because at that point there was a lockdown uh, due to um, I, I think it was that lady who was spreading it all around the north, um, poor lady, um, been demonised by the government, uh, left, right and centre, she should actually um, go for defamation, but that's not what we're, what we're talking about here today. Um, talking about the, the I suppose, uh, yeah, um, leading up to how we got stuck at that border. Um, as I said, we were on these Zooms and everything was going great. Um, lockdowns happened and then we decided, well, we've got to do something about it. Let's do a hikoi. And the original plan for the hikoi was to leave from Cape Rianga and head to Wellington. That was always the plan. Um, at, that, at that point, um, I think Reti Boynton was going to be uh, facilitating the lead of that. And most people were in total of that situation. Um, and then, in like two days after, when we had, you know, kind of started getting into the planning phase, um, another group came in and called it shot, S H O T, the Sovereign Hikoi of Truth. And then all of a sudden, we were going from Rotorua to Waitangi, which kind of is okay because you know it's Wakaputanga Day on the twenty eighth, so. <coughs> of October, so you know it made sense for a lot of people who were looking into Wakaputanga at the time and had never actually experienced uh, Waitangi during Wakaputanga Day, um, which, to my understanding, has actually only really started to become a thing maybe over the, only the last two, three years. Prior to that, it was uh, a bunch of old fellas kind of getting together, um, talking about the Wakamininga and stuff prior to that. Um, it's a new concept, I suppose, to celebrate the 28th of October. So, 
we were told that all of this planning was getting done, that there was all this paperwork that was going to be provided so that we could get through the borders, that customary law was going to be adhered to so that with every um, rohe that we pass through, that there's a border, that the hokainga of that area would pour for us in. That was the kōrero. Because at that time, a lot of people were, were you know, you know, we're still under that impression that uh, you can't, a native Aboriginal title is unextinguishable. Thus, our customary rights are a handi. So, you know, we were going to try it that way. We we're just going to get a whole bunch of um, whānau together and then get them to porphyry the group through, basically. But unfortunately, those um, things uh, never worked out either. Um, also, I'd just like to point out um, in the clip that I just showed, it said that I wasn't going. And I, 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 by the time I had learned that it was going from Rotorua back up to Waitangi, I had, I had no um, really uh, want to go to Waitangi at that time. I was quite busy. I think I was with, doing lambing and stuff at the time on the farm. So um, I didn't want to go to Waitangi, basically. I just went down to Rotorua here with the bro um, Rangi who's uh, the cameraman for this and um, we were just going to film the beginning and watch them go through yeah followers kia ora thank you now sorry it's a I've got, with live streams you got to keep up with well, I'm going to try and keep up with my brain so um, just bear with me as I as I talk this through so this road of brewer here, this is where it all kicked off. Um, and a very important conversation ha I had here with a very good friend of mine now, but I had only just met him on the day. Um, the conversation, I suppose, made me start to think about the, 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 the events that happened and transpired since. In that conversation, it kind of it started off like this, it went, oh kia ora, matua, oh hey bro, this is, I'm, I'm the hoary fella, um, I've got something to tell you, oh true, now this stuff kind of happens to me quite often, I'll randomly uh, people will enter my life and give me very important information right before uh, situations happen. Um, and this man is uh, highly in tune, I suppose is the best way to put it. He said to me, oh, you've been staying in Rotorua lately. I said, yeah. He's like, oh, have you um, spent some time in Ohunamutu? And I said, yeah. He's like, oh, have you seen the Freemasonic symbols and stuff there? I said, oh, yeah, I was trying to figure out what it was. And anyway, he told me the, the, the deal there in Ohunamutu with the um, Masonic symbology all over the marae there, or Tamata Kapua. And um, basically he told me that the head witch is living in Ohenamutu and she controls the GCSB and the digital uh, communications. And uh, she's able to incept uh, makutu and stuff through phones. Now, I make this point here and tell you this now because I know a lot of people are interested in the the more spiritual things that occurred to us uh, while we were at Mursa, uh, particularly with uh, particular Rako. But we're not talking about the Rako today. Um, that's going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, but hopefully, you will start to think, "Hmm, what is? Oh, okay. Oh, is this how they're 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 programming us through our phones, basically?" <coughs> now move on from Rotorua after this bit I have a bit of a chat to Te Ao Māori News but we'll jump on to the next one I hope this is working so here Call, we've um, oh, been stopped in Hamilton so this is the yeah. first time that we kind of realised okay. that we're being um, We've been monitored the whole way, um, but we ended up 
keep on going. So um, don't have too much um, footage of our stop here in, in Hamilton. Um, this is a cool one. This is when... Um, they, oh, they might think it's a turn-off, is it? This is Rangi and I. We've <laughs> oh, gone yeah, ahead right. and we stopped on the side of the road. And this is the convoy. And this was this is so cool. And I'm going to let it play out because this was really exciting. And um, I can't wait to do it again, but properly. You know? Uh, unfortunately, this, this may signify a whole lot of people that were kind of um, led down a garden path but at the same time, a, a beautiful look of solidarity. Um, hopefully you can hear me at the same time with these horns uh, going over. Yeah, we should be able to. Um, but there was a lot of people in that convoy, man. There was a lot of people in that convoy, and it was cool as. And I, I just want to show the end of it, because fuck, it's funny as. time was this? This was maybe 8, 9 o'clock, like maybe the same time as now. Look how many people. We were worried that we were going to get people to go the wrong way. But nah, everyone was onto it. Except... So um, yeah, that was that was fun, and then we uh, kept on going to um, the BP. I can't remember exactly where that is, but it's kind of just south of the border um, there, where everybody gassed up. Um, got a little bit of footage there or there, and this is kind of where I met the bro, it's the sissy there in the yellow hoodie. It's just cool to re-watch all the stuff and all the memories and that start floating back, eh? And, um, so this is the... Is it working yet? This is the, um... This is when we arrived to the border. And, um, so Rangi and I are in front of the, the convoy again. <coughs> And here we can see all of the police. Um, obviously, yeah, they knew exactly what was going on. You know, uh, it was all set up. They, they, they knew exactly what was going on, basically. <laughs> and all of their um, liaisons with us were, were highly trained in, in basically being assholes, lying prick assholes, basically. So um, I am going to talk through this one and, and kind of just let it play. Um, kind of uh, rushed, I suppose, through all of that corridor. Um, but I will put the full clip of this up in um, in YouTube so that people can kind of see exactly what happened uh, at the front of the convoy because I know a lot of people were kind of confused at, at what was going on. Let's fast forward it here a little bit. There's the bros vent. Are you insisting? Yeah. Why? Are you not heading north, okay? Why not? Are you telling me? Are you a corporation? Rung is a man. Are you working for a corporation? Follow the, follow the right. I asked you a question, you're a public servant, can you please answer me? Are you working for a corporation, sir? Why not? They're you're belligerent. A servant, I'm asking you a question. Definitely not doing their job. Definitely not doing their job. 
Dishonourable police. Dishonourable. All you people are acting dishonourable. And that's Do you realise that? You're all acting dishonourable. So I have all your badge numbers. And that's the key. Is that um they're all acting dishonorably basically is the best way to put it um and it was something that a hard lesson i suppose that we had to learn um during our time at, at, at the mercer border and that's no pieces of paper we're going to save our asses these guys are not working for us as the bro stated they're working for a corporation that means that they can kind of do whatever they want within the jurisdictions of their corporation now that waka kotahi is named the way it is and all of our roads are now put into uh, private titles rather than uh, public civil titles these are the things that they can do to us and these are the rights that we've kind of let slip um, is that still working? no that stopped didn't it? And it was interesting because there were already a lot of people there. Um, you can sign C on the other side of the road there. We've got the rest of the, the, the convoy. We can see this is, Rangi and I have already turned around because we had planned to leave, basically. <coughs> we, we knew that they weren't going to be getting through. And... Um, Well, that's but, an interesting uh, but, uh, thing. Apparently, from because it's Māori Rangers documents, eh? And um, so yeah, something's gone wrong. So at that point, I'm talking. Uh, I can't remember who I'm talking to, but um, basically, we'd already known at that point that there was a difference between the original document and the one that everyone had been given um, by the Māori Rangers. Well, we know now that it wasn't actually the Māori Rangers. It was. Um, it was Pete with his uh, embassy of Tamawana Nui Akiwa um, and his weird Egyptian symbology over everything. Um, here we can see it actually. We can see the convoy. Here's the trucks that were all being kind of let through. And right down the back there is the convoy kind of parked up, um, kind of figuring out what to do, basically, because they can tell where well, they can't get through the trucks. So you know yeah. the people who said that we could get through you know they were adamant you could get through you could get through well they obviously didn't think that they'll just put trucks in front of us you know what do these guys want to say yeah yeah okay you watch out, we have got some trucks coming down through the other lane. Through this lane? Oh, oh through the other lane. So what yeah, are you talking to me you're, for? You're pretty close. You can see all the big trucks coming through, okay? Uh, if you wanna if you wanna park somewhere, you can probably park off just over there. But if I can ask you to move on, that'd be good. Oh, well, I was, I was, the officer said I could talk to someone. Sir! 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 What an ignorant prick, sir! Sir! Oh, yeah, play that had, game, are we? Bro yeah, had every right to talk to them like this. What? And they know that they can't touch us, and that, you know, they're really hesitant about actually engaging because of how, you know, the, the cops have been um, trained now in knowing how to deal with sovereign people. Um, and that's just fucking just try to, like, leave you alone. Basically. I just want confirmation. I'm good. Hey, um, you guys are in a truck lane, so um, we just got your, your uh, fellas there backing up into a panic. Uh, 
it's going to be open up at you're going to uh, uh, are people your... going to come and talk to us like we stated yeah, we'll, we'll get cops to come over and have a chat to you okay. yeah but can i ask you um if you back up just be, be careful and yep. then just there's a paddock in here and you guys can just pop up and listen out we'll can, you, can, you, can, you, can you move this one out a little bit out of the way please too and we'll just we'll just back it in me being nice as always <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was the cops moved us into the paddock. It was all planned. Like, they knew exactly where to put us. Like, um, nice, clear, open paddock, you know, ready for cars. Fuck, the finale of this, uh, these episodes are going to be fantastic. We've got all the footage of like all the cops all lining up at us, like ready to rumble at us, and we're all going, later. <laughs> now, how much further have we got on that one? Because um, I, think we can, I think in this clip we've actually got them all moving in. Should we go, should we go check what's down there? Look, there's a big hole, I can't get through that. No. We're all waiting to get through the checkpoint. They're all going to get turned around. Yeah, you know it, Rungy. There's, there's corporations think they have authority over us, but in reality they know more authority than the McDonald's worker. Yep. If a McDonald's worker doesn't want to put mayonnaise, mayonnaise in your burger, he doesn't have to, basically. Yeah, and these are all the people coming through now. It was sad. It was sad, it was like, felt defeat in the people already. You know? And at this point I was like, I'm still going home. <laughs> uh, until I kind of, yeah, started to realize. A car. I don't know how many cars there were, maybe no, 50 or so? when you let a corporation run right in your country. I think they have the authority and the audacity to block the roads and ask you for papers, identification papers, please. Not That's a good situation, he's on. Not a good situation. Media over here. Yeah, media were already there. We're working for the paid media that Jacinda's paid to get their narrative out. COVID's fearful, guys. It's not COVID that'll kill you, it's the vaccine. And that is a fact. And a is year right after, here, we know it's a bit we're of a fact now, down. don't we? ton of cars. So I'll move forward. Um, Corporate policy. Because that, that keeps on going. There's heaps of cars that all come in. It's just basically us setting up. Cesalia, very strong corridors all the time. We, uh, we don't even know each other, but we like one another. And I just want to finish off with this because I think a few of you we remember. I was on my live stream in the bro's car, that red one, um, right there in the background, and um, people are texting me going, do haka, do haka, do haka, and I'm going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and I'm like building up, and I'm like, ah, ah. that fella started crying, that Māori fella, when he seen his, um, his tūpuna. People are dying, people are scared, 
people are losing their jobs. And we're going to seek counsel from the first house. Waitangi, where we all come from, without Waitangi, without the declaration of treaty, what? We're the only, co the only country in the world that has a treaty and a declaration. Stand up. Stand up. We're the only country. And I'm scared of that. So only together can we stand in our honour because it's true. Because they but we've had enough. So we will stay here until we have freedom to travel. Because we have the right under all laws. We shouldn't be afraid of the government. The government should be afraid of us. Don't you just love Haka? Ah. Sorry, tooting around with my sound levels and stuff as I'm going there to make sure that it's all sounding good. Hopefully it's sounding good out there for you, Whanau. Um, that was a cool Haka. I really enjoyed, not enjoyed, maybe the wrong word, but I felt the, the, the mana when that one went on, especially when I got backed up with the bro Neha there. Um, I'd just like to point out at this time, thank you Neha for doing the second time round. It was that second time round that fucked my throat and I couldn't fucking talk for the rest of the th three days that we were out there. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Kazi. Um, and that actually um, brought us onto a, a beautiful f friendship, basically. And um, everybody there at Mercer, I just want to say a big um, shout out to you all. Big fucking love yous heaps, eh? Um, we did a lot that uh, those few days. I, I can't even remember how many days we were there. It felt like weeks. But um, the next episode is going to be really exciting. Um, goes into the day basically, and um, and I don't actually know. Actually, we'll we'll, we'll get into that. Um, so that's next Wednesday. Um, if you you guys might be able to twist my arm, I might be able to do one by the weekend. But um, for now, check out the about and Huck of the Beehive Twitch channel. Um, down there you can donate, you can check out all the rest of the homies out there that are um, doing um, good mahi around the motu. Um, big shout out to all those homies out there. Um, and big shout out to all the viewers out there. Much love. I hope um, these these next few uh, episodes that I bring out have a show, show a bit more clarity on uh, the Mercer debacle. And um, I'd really like to open up conversation with anybody out there. Uh, about um, you know what happened because you know I'd love to know if there was if there's there was people with the footage on the other side of the borders on the other side there um, with uh, with Papa and them at that occupation because that's a whole nother story linked with this one but they had their own amazing story that happened um, so yeah amazing things happened to us crazy shit happened to us. Um, but I hope, yeah, over the next few episodes, I don't know how many episodes are going to be, but um, we can talk about the things that happened to us, um, some of the feelings that we all got um, from those times, uh, the observations that we saw, um, and, and any 
um, any opinion basically on on what happened, you know, and because, man, you know, I, I've been all over the mutu doing out of it stuff, but this is definitely one of the most out of it things that I was all that I've been a part of. So, much love to you all out there. Uh, my name's Corey. Um, this is Huck of the Beehive TV uh, special from the Mercer border. Uh, much love to you all. See you all October 28th in Waitangi and across the border over there, Kororarika and Russell. Love you all. Peace out. Well, that ending wasn't too bad, was it? Hey, you're supposed to stop recording.